Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush back at it with another video. We have finally gotten details on the major Steam update. The new Steam library is coming September 17th, and there's a lot of new stuff being added. It's gonna be a complete overhaul to the UI. Some people are really into it. I've seen from my comment section, some people are actually a little bit, you know, disappointed by it, I guess would be the right word. I see more so people just don't want the Steam interface to change at all, which is fine. I think Steam works relatively well as it is, but nonetheless, I do like that they're updating it, giving it a refresh. And we'll take a look at that. PC Gamer has a pretty in-depth article going over all of the changes, so we'll have a look at that. Also, Kingdom Come Deliverance is the free-to-play weekend this weekend, so you can download the game and play it for free, and it has an awesome deal. The Royal Edition is discounted, so we'll look at that, and two free games on the EGS store. Pretty good titles at that, and we'll talk that at the end of this video. So Steam is getting a new update, and PC Gamer specifically described it as looking like Netflix or Apple TV or Amazon Prime Video. And I definitely see the resemblance in what they're talking about. It definitely has a modern look if you look at all of these streaming platforms. Whether it be the sports streaming platforms, whether it be a Netflix, Amazon Prime, they kind of have a very similar UI across all of them. They all have their unique nuances. But overall, there's a lot of imagery. There's a lot of simplicity in finding what you want to play. Right now, Steam, you can have a couple of different overviews and a couple of different layouts. There's the grid layout, there's the list layout, and there's one other layout. However, it definitely isn't a modern look. It's a look that I've definitely gotten accustomed to and I think a lot of you guys have as well so change is always a little bit scary but I think over a while a lot of people are going to get accustomed to the new UI and they're going to dig it for what it is. Coming September 17th it's bringing a more modern look to the Steam library recognizing game pages with larger artwork a prominent space for updates and a new homepage that highlights what your friends are playing and games you may not even remember you own. It's absolutely prettier though it's a facelift that does make it look an awful like other contemporary digital libraries. Now on one sense I think a lot of the art and Steam fans are going to be like, oh, that's a little bit of a bummer. Steam is undergoing this change, but I think overall it is going to be a more effective change. And it's going to make Steam a more appetizing platform for those that aren't into PC gaming yet or those that don't have Steam downloaded. I mean, at this point, if you're in the Steam ecosystem and you've got what, north of 100, 200, 300 games, I think for the majority of us, we're going to stick around with the platform unless they do some drastic changes that completely turns everybody off. And at that point, they probably would go back to their original layout or their original style of presenting their content, whatever the case may be. If you already have categories set up, PC Gamer specifically noted that Steam's best new library feature is a smarter organizing tool called Collections, which replaces the old category system. Collections are essentially Steam's version of a Gmail filter. The buzzword for collections is dynamic. You can create a collection by choosing from a variety of tags, say RPG and multiplayer and controller support, and Steam will automatically put all of the games in your library. The dynamic bit is that Steam will add any future games you buy with those tags to the collection too, so that is going to simplify going from category to category and I really like that addition. It's just overall going to make Steam very easy to navigate. Now I think for the majority of us, for those that are ardent PC gamers, Steam is already relatively easy to navigate especially your library, but honestly speaking, when your library does get pretty big, for example, I think my library is north of 600 games at this point and it's very, very easy for those of you guys that are more recent PC gamers to amass a library that big. Give it a couple of years, your library is probably going to be around the 600 mark. I mean, I've been PC gaming since 2011, so I've had quite a bit of time to amass that library, but nonetheless, that library builds up really quickly, especially after your first couple Steam sales, after your first couple summer sales with all the other e-tailers. That library builds very quickly, and honestly speaking, sometimes I'm like looking for a new game to play, and I can't pick something, and I honestly forget about games I own so regularly. I know, if you want to talk about first world problems, this is absolutely it, but it looks like Steam is going to make it a little bit easier to find everything that you want. If you already have categories set up, they'll transfer directly over and become collections, you can also drag and drop games into collections manually if you want and add a shelf to your home screen to organize games in a way that suits you. I know for me, I don't even go through the hassle of organizing anything or adding tags or categories. I kind of just let Steam be, so for them to have a simplified version where it kind of auto does everything, I know for me that's definitely enticing. There's also a new home screen that is mainly organized to show you what your friends are doing and what new things are happening in games you often play. It all looks pretty nice and Valve's stated goals are to help you identify what's going on and quickly jump back into stuff you've played recently, but building out this page with prominent slots for events, new game releases, which I definitely like, and what your friends are playing also seems like a way to get Steam users to buy more games and keep you more invested into the platform. Now, obviously, from that sense, it's effective to the consumer because it at least lets you know what everybody else is playing, but from 
a Steam standpoint, it also allows them to sell you more games, and it is a business at the end of the day, and they're trying to get as much money from you as possible. Honestly, one of the problems with Steam is that there's too many games available right now, so to actually pick a game to buy, sometimes that becomes an arduous task in its own right. So if they could just direct you into the games that you absolutely want, direct you to the games that your friends are playing, and get you to buy those games, I think it's going to have consumers buying more games, investing more money into Steam, and from a business standpoint on their end, I think it does make a lot of sense. Game Pages will also now offer a nice new post-game summary section that shows you what achievements you unlocked in the last session and include your recent screenshots, which I can definitely see being used by a lot of people. It's just going to give you more metrics on your games and there's nothing wrong with that. Other additions are being added. Again, I'll leave the PC Gamer link in the description box down below. There is so much being added. It's probably the biggest Steam overhaul and update in a very long time. So mark your calendars for September 17th because a lot of stuff on Steam is going to be changing. I think mostly for the better, but we'll see this update being rolled out. Hopefully it doesn't cause any game breaking bugs or any Steam fatal errors or anything like that. They've worked on this for quite a while. So let's just hope the transition happens incredibly smoothly. All right, lastly, I do want to note a couple of free items. Kingdom Come Deliverance is enjoying a free weekend. You can play the game for the next three days absolutely free. Just download it and you can check out a fantastic open world historical RPG. I was a big fan of this game. Yes, it did have its issues at launch, some technical errors here and there, but a lot of that has been remedied and I think there's a lot more good to bad than KCD. And the game itself, if you do end up enjoying it, you can buy it to own 50% off for $14.99. However, I would highly recommend the Royal Edition. That is 25% off for $29.99, so that's a really good buy as well. That includes all of the DLC, and that's really the definitive KCD experience. And at this point, if you have the option to get the base game or the Royal Edition, yes, the Royal Edition is twice the price of the base game, but you also get a lot of extra content. That is the route I would go. I should also note that if you want to play the base game and you want to do so in a cheap way, Game Pass Ultimate subscriptions for that are $2 for two months. KCD is one of those games in that subscription. Gears 5 is being added tonight. Just want to throw that idea out there as well. But for those of you guys that want to play the game on Steam, download it free and you can play it over the weekend. Obviously, after the weekend, then if you want to play it, you will have to buy the game or you will lose access to it and the download will remain and you can delete it then on. All right. And lastly, I do want to note a couple of freebies over on the Epic Game Store. The End is Nigh is available free as well as Obzu. I can't really speak on the End is Nigh, although it's been received very, very well. Obzu is a really good game. If you want a chill experience that isn't all too challenging, but a game that you can just relax and play, Obzu is definitely that kind of game. It has a lot of resemblances to the PlayStation exclusives in Journey and Flower. Flower is actually a game that recently released on PC as well. So not an exclusive anymore. But Obzu is a game that I would definitely recommend and it typically goes for $19.99. That's the retail price. That is the MSRP. However, it goes on sale pretty regularly, but right now it is available free along with the End is Nigh. So I definitely would give both of them a look, add them to your library. And in the case of Obzu, I can speak directly. That is quite a good game. So do give that a playthrough. And that is going to conclude this video. Again, the Steam library is getting a huge facelift come September 17th. I think it's going to be a facelift for the better, but we'll see how it turns out. Let's just hope the transition is as smooth as possible because that could really be the fatal issue here. If things just go awry and there's little issues here and there that just makes the overall experience worse. That would be a complete train wreck, so let's hope that doesn't happen. Kingdom Come Deliverance is free for the weekend. Definitely give that a look if you want to own the game. Base game is 50% off for $14.99, although I'd recommend the Royal Edition, which is only seeing a 25% off discount, but still for $29.99, not a bad buy. And EGS is offering the End is Nigh and Obzu for free right now, so give both of those a look. That's going to wrap up this video, guys. If you guys have a request for a future video, you can leave that in the comments section down below, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hey, what's going on guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.